or sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth. In his presence are majesty and splendour, strength and honour in his holy place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Welcome to this um, Sunday where the theme of the Sunday itself is to do with the gift of vocation. The gospel is to do with the calling of the apostles and the way in which what it means to be called is something which is shared across the whole life of the family of the church. Our whole discipleship is given to understanding more clearly what it means to be a person who has been called to live in a particular way of life. So let's just uh, continue now with our, our first hymn, and a word will appear on the screen. It's the hymn, Lord, You Give the Great Commission.
so as we now prepare to uh, open our hearts and minds to explore the gift of vocation and calling, we begin first by clearing away all that hinders that calling from being heard by uh, some prayers of penitence. Lord, for those times when we have deliberately cut out or shut out the possibility of your call to us, Lord, have mercy. For those times when we have turned away and sought our own way of life. Christ, have mercy. For those times when we have turned away from the gift of vocation, being uncovered, nurtured and called to flourish within the life of the church. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins and bring us the joy of the fullness of the life of heaven. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray the collect which is set for this particular Sunday in the Church's calendar year. Almighty and ever-living God, direct our actions according to your gift of calling, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works, through Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. So we're going to hear our first reading now, which is going to be read for us by, by Stephanie. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they are not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they have no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words from today's Gospel are taken from St Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you into fishers of people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat, mending their nets. He called them at once. And leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the men he employed, they went after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This wonderful theme of the calling of the Apostles can be seen in this first picture that we've chosen for today. It's a very simple picture, but you can see when you look more closely the lovely response, the immediate response of the apostles themselves. And the calling of the apostles in this case here is, of course, Andrew uh, and Simon Peter. And it's a calling of local people in local jobs serving local communities. It isn't abstract at all or something to do with something that happens to other people. It's here and now under our very noses. 
It sounds like an advert for a new business. The ordinary and the everyday is caught up with something which is anything but ordinary and everything but something everyday or mundane. There is nothing at all mundane about responding to this call. This calling first heard by the apostles and continually heard in every generation since. The words vocation and mission seem to have been hijacked in, in recent years. There are mission statements everywhere in businesses and communities all over the world. And the language of vocational qualifications seem to be uh, more widely advertised as something to work for. But this simple picture shows that calling uh, to be who you are in the deepest sense of that worth and that word worth and value being recognized purely and simply as a gift in other words no qualifications you can't earn it it's something that you uh, are, are simply given it's the gift of god himself calling you to share in his life to recognize the beauty of who you are and who you can become. And of course, this doesn't just happen as if by magic or with no looking closely at our own lives. Notice the way the gospel early on has calling, but is always preceded by penitence, repentance. The phrase in the gospel today is, the kingdom of God is close at hand. Yes, but straight away, this is followed by the words, repent and believe. The Christian life is a beautiful, life-giving cooperation with God. Together we honestly search those parts of our life which are amiss or not life-giving in some way and we confess them. That's why penitence always starts the main liturgy. We look for direction and that direction comes in the form of calling. They respond and they leave immediately. So much for concern about job security. But the apostles in their role as fishermen recognise the irresistible quality of Christ's voice, which speaks to every fibre of their being. And so they respond. And the second painting today comes from a tradition which is known as theosis. It's an ancient tradition which simply means growing closer into Christ's life. Once he is called, then we grow near, drawing closer to that extraordinary love found in ordinary places that we know to be our deepest need and our deepest fundamental longing as Christian human beings. This painting shows how those who have been called over the years have tried and been called to draw closer and closer into Christ's life. You can see how close they are. It begins with Mary and with the apostles and the saints and you can see the way in which they're being called closer and closer into Christ's life. It goes on continually and you and I are in that crowd. You can see it going back uh, forever. But just because we might think of ourselves as being called many years down the road, it doesn't make it any less valuable or any less precious. We share in the same gift as was given and received from the same source by those first apostles. It's an extraordinary gift, an extraordinary share, which has been given to us as well. That's why in the language of the creed, we often hear the phrase, I believe in the communion of saints. That beautiful phrase which shows how one body with all those called over the years that we share in. So as we continue to draw close to that one calling in our prayer and worship, may we have the grace to confess our need of help. And may we have the openness of heart and mind <coughs> to hear and to follow in the gifts of faith. Amen. And so we pray together in the words of the uh, creed, the words which uh, affirm that same gift of faith. This is the full version, the, the Nicene Creed, which we usually say together on Sundays and at other times during the course of the year. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen.
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we pray for the life of the church at this time. When I said the words, help us to hear your call, please respond with the words, to bring in your kingdom on earth. Help us to hear your call, to bring in your kingdom on earth. And so we pray in thanksgiving for the life of the church scattered throughout the nations of this earth. In thanksgiving for the homes of the church here at St Paul's and at St Mary's. And at this particular time, the church all over the world is called to pray for the needful gifts of unity. O risen Jesus, bread of life, make us whole within, one with ourselves, one with our fellow Christians, one with all people. Make us loving and forgiving, accepting and concerned, a reflection of the wholeness which is only ever to be found in your own life. Help us to hear your call, to bring in your kingdom on earth. So we pray for that wholeness and unity of healing, which is only ultimately found within the life of your son. We pray that it may grow across the nations of this earth, struggling to combat this pandemic. We also pray for those people who continue for all sorts of personal reasons to deny the reality of the pandemic. We also pray for them. We pray for chaplains and all those who serve in our region's hospitals. Remembering David Anderson and Andrew Horsfall, who we have committed ourselves to praying every day for in their ministry amongst the dying on the COVID wards at Blackburn. Help us to hear your call to bring in your kingdom on earth. We pray for the people of the United States of America, for healing. We pray for the needful gifts of healing, which is both cultural, social, political and religious in every nation across the face of this earth. Help us to hear your call to bring in your kingdom on earth. More locally, we pray in thanksgiving for the work of our school at St Paul's Primary, for Julie Wood, their head teacher, for all those working in difficult and ever-changing circumstances, that they too may hear the voice of you who call. Help us to hear your call, to bring in your kingdom on earth. Continue to pray for the needs of all those who are sick in mind or body, for the gifts of healing, for all those who work uh, professionally and medically in the healing services, but also for the church's ministry of healing through the gifts of prayer. Help us to hear your call, to bring in your kingdom on earth. For all those recently departed, those in our region who have lost their lives to COVID, but also continually those who are working in the funeral services and caring for the needs of the bereaved, those who suffer the loss of loved ones for all sorts of reasons. 
Help us to hear your call, to bring in your kingdom on earth. And so we pray for ourselves and for the whole company of the church, that we may grow afresh as people ever attentive, drawing ever closer and closer to hearing that same gift of vocation, which speaks to every single one of us in ways which are particular and unique to each and every one of us along the Christian pilgrim's way. Help us to hear your call, to bring in your kingdom on earth. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the healing of the Church and the continued offering of the Eucharist is the healing of the nations of this earth. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's perhaps exchange a sign of peace with anybody we may be uh, living with at this particular time, but also uh, spiritually, the peace that, they, that we share with our brothers and sisters in faith, wherever they may be at this time. And before we now receive the gift of Christ's uh, ever-present life in bread and wine, uh, we sing the hymn, Jesus Calls Us O'er the Tumult. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Heavenly Father, through Christ our Lord. For you never forsake the works of all your wisdom. But with your ever-calling voice, are ever at one, drawing us closer and closer to you. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. And now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of your Holy Spirit, calling her to discover afresh the ways of discipleship. And so with the angels and saints, we continue to proclaim with Christians of all ages your ever uh, life-giving hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Lord, you are holy indeed to be glorified forever, who love the human race and who always walk amongst us, calling us afresh in every generation. 
Be present in our midst when we are gathered or dispersed, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Heavenly Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, before breaking the bread and giving it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your life until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your holy church to show forth this eternal mystery which has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of the body of your Son in whom we have life and fellowship and communion. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and for ever. Amen. And so rejoicing in the company of the Church, in this and in every age and generation, we pray together the words our Saviour taught us all to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever is called, hears and follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those people whom you love and pray for today and forevermore. Amen.